guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews, and today we're gonna to be reviewing this all new 2022 GMC Canyon Denali. And before we start, I wanna give a huge thank you to Jordan and the rest of the extremely kind management and staff here at Rivard Buick and GMC here in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to their inventory below, but if you're looking for a new car or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely suggest checking these guys out and as for Jordan. So for those of you guys who don't know, the Canyon's been GMC's midsize truck since 2003. It took over the Chevy S10 platform, same with the Chevy Colorado. Uh, that was their compact truck prior to the Colorado and Canyon. But fast forward to 2011, that's when GMC released the second generation Canyon as well as the second generation for Chevy's Colorado. And that second generation platform is basically still what we have here today. Uh, we are gonna be getting an update for 2023. That's when the third generation is gonna be released. But as far as this 2022 GMC Denali, we are gonna get a couple of updates. We're gonna see what we have new here for 2022. But as far as the front end styling, let's jump right in. So up front, we're gonna have our LED projector beam headlight. Next to it, we're gonna have our high beam and we're gonna have a little bit of a daytime running strip up top. Um, unfortunately, it's only gonna be working when the vehicle's in drive. Right now, the cars are, the trucks in park, so we're not gonna be able to see it. Uh, we got the turn signal on the outside and right down here, we got a little bit of a GMC little name. But down here, we have an LED uh, fog light right over here with some chrome on the outside, a little bit of flat black over here as well. But the big part about this front end is gonna be this massive GMC chrome grill. A lot of chrome, massive GMC logo right here. No front facing camera, unfortunately, for this Denali trim. Uh, we're gonna see there are a couple options that I do wish this vehicle included, but we're still gonna have some really high quality materials. A lot of airflow over here for this grill. Um, down here, we have a little bit of additional airflow for this radiator. Yes, this is gonna be a radiator since we're gonna have the 3.6 liter V6 engine. Um, a little bit of flat black down here. It does contrast the white paint color pretty well. Um, as far as the white, it's just gonna be a refrigerator white. It's not gonna be a metallic color, but I do like these tow hooks over here in the front. Definitely gonna get this truck out of some sticky situations if it does ever end up off-road. But we can take a step over here. We can take a look at the undercarriage of this mid-sized truck. But we'll take a step over here to the side. I like this bulge over here for the hood too. Definitely makes the front end look more aggressive. But as far as this wheel and tire setup, uh, first thing I noticed is gonna be, we have a six piece lug pattern on this mid-sized truck. I wasn't really expecting that. I like this little contrast between the silver and the slight gunmetal gray contrast. I'm not sure if it'll pick up through the camera, but as far as the rims themselves, I am a fan of the design. It kind of looks to me like the clover you get in an ace of clubs. The tires are gonna be Bridgestone Dueler tires. The dimensions are gonna be 255, 55 R20s. So we're gonna get 20 inch rims on this Denali and they are gonna be 255. So pretty wide compound for the front and rear. But continuing along, we're gonna get running boards, which is nice, but it is gonna take up a little bit of the overall ground clearance, but not too big of a deal. Since this is a Denali, it's not really meant to be an off-roader. If you want the off-road package, that's when I'd recommend going with the AT4. But anyway, continuing along, we can check out our mirror over here. We have a massive Denali badge right down over here. But as far as the mirror, no blind spot monitoring. That's definitely a minus for this uh, pretty expensive truck. We are gonna be sitting around 42,000 bucks, but we are gonna get a blind spot pocket. So we are gonna be able to see just about anything we would need to see. A little bit of chrome trim down here. Not a big deal though, because the top, it's gonna be body color and we have some blacked out B pillar right over here. And the rear is gonna be tinted. That's also a thumbs up for GMC. Definitely helping the styling. Uh, push the open gas tank with easy fill. Uh, this vehicle does accept 87 octane fuel too with this 3.7 liter or 3.6 liter V6. Uh, down here, we have the same wheel and tire set up with the 255s on the 20 inch rims. You can take a look at your leaf springs right back over here. I don't know if I can pick up the shock absorber. It's gonna be right down there. And we can take a look at the spare tire right over here. It's just gonna be a steel rim, unfortunately, but it is still gonna be a full size spare. Uh, back here, I like how GMC or GM in general puts the step right here for their truck. So it gives you much easier access of getting into your bed. You simply can just grab whatever you need right here without even having to drop your tailgate. We got our tail lights right over here with the reverse lights. We are gonna get parking sensors too. That's definitely nice for the truck. It's gonna start around 42,000 uh, bucks. The trailer hitch right over here. This truck's gonna be ready to tow around 7,000 pounds. You got your electronics right here. And this area is gonna be illuminated thanks to these two lights right over here. But over here, we got our GMC nameplate with a Denali in the Canyon right down here. We can pop this tailgate and we do have a camera right here. And this camera is gonna have a trailer camera. So it'll have a little bit of a line. We'll check it out once we go inside. The line's gonna help you line up your trailer hitch with its receiver. But to pop this tailgate, it is gonna be damped, very softly damped. It's gonna be a really high quality liner too. It's gonna feel very, very durable. The Denali nameplate is gonna be etched in the liner itself 
We're gonna have four sets of tie downs for this cor for the corners of this bed, and the payload capacity is gonna be almost 1,400 pounds. It's gonna be around 1,373, I believe, if I wanna be exact, but that's about it. We could take a step back, check out the rear styling on this 2022 Canyon Denali, and let's pop a squat, give you guys a couple revs, and hear how this 3.6 liter V6 sounds. All right, guys, that was, of course, the sound of the 3.6 liter V6 sold by GMC for the Canyon Denali. And unfortunately, we're gonna have a 3,500 RPM rev limiter, but I hope you still picked up a nice audio clip of how this V6 sounds. Um, as far as the motor, let's check it out. Definitely a thumbs up for GMC for giving us struts. Wasn't really expecting struts, but here you have it. This V6 engine is gonna make 308 horsepower and about 275 pound-feet of torque. It's gonna be direct injected with variable valve timing. The battery's gonna be on the driver's side, but not a very big deal. This motor does seem to be pushed a little bit to the left, maybe right on center, but the weight balance overall should be definitely more than good enough. But that's about it, definitely impressive. This truck should get to 16 around seven seconds, maybe even a little bit quicker, depending on your wheel spin and overall traction. But we can shut this hood right over here, take a step back, take one last look at this front styling on this 2022 GMC Canyon Denali. But Let's take a step over here and check out the interior on this luxury mid-size truck. So this is really where it's gonna shine. And first thing I noticed, we're not gonna get smart access for the driver or the front passenger. That would definitely be expected and it would definitely be appreciated for the upcoming 2023. And I'm sure GMC is gonna take care of that. I'm sure they thought it through. This is still gonna be based on a 2011 platform. But as far as the door panel, you can see it looks really beautiful. I love the design. I like this contrast stitching. Um, as far as this area over here, very soft touch area for where your elbow will often rest. White contrast stitching. This area is super high quality as well. Really, really high quality leather here. Only problem is this part up top is gonna be hard plastic. It would definitely be nice for GM to give us some softer materials for the upper part of the door panel, but still the area where you're gonna be resting your arm the most, it's gonna be soft touch. I love this wood trim on the outside. It's gonna be grain too. It feels extremely high quality. Power one touch for all four windows. That's also a nice touch. You're gonna to have four-way adjustable mirrors right over here. Uh, you got some child controls. You can lock up their windows and doors right here as well. A little bit of additional storage, a little bit of also additional storage. You usually don't see that in a lot of vehicles. Solid size cup holder right here. You should easily be able to fit a 12 ounce bottle. But this area right here, not the deepest inlay. You might be able to fit a small sandwich in there, but not a very big deal. As far as the stepping inside, we are gonna get the running board. Not necessarily necessary for a mid-sized truck, but it'll definitely help shorter passengers get in and out. Love this Denali nameplate. I like the aluminum, I like this touch and the chrome for the detail for the Denali itself. As far as these seats, unbelievably comfortable seats. Really impressed with the leather quality. Uh, they're gonna be heated and cooled. So as far as the options and usability, definitely a thumbs up for GM. I like the contrast stitching too. Definitely a soft seat setup. Uh, they're gonna be power slide uh, with lumbar controls. It's just to recline, it's gonna be a manual touch. Not quite sure why they couldn't give you the full adjustability for the entire seat. But again, I'm sure that's gonna be coming for 2023. But to take a step inside this 2022 GMC Canyon Denali, first thing we're gonna notice is the steering wheel. And it's definitely a thumbs up for me. I like this more than the steering wheel in the Sierras and Silverados. I like the 10 and two bolstering notch. It's a little bit thicker, I think. And the nine and three definitely fits a little bit better in your hands and it does cave in very well. Um, if you wanna have your arm on this pretty soft armrest, you have a pretty solid space right here for your hand. Uh, if you wanna be reckless with your arm on your lap, you can have your hand right here in the center spoke. And the same thing for the other armrest right over here. Uh, the steering wheel is gonna give you the cruise control settings with four collision alert, and it's gonna be a heated steering wheel. Definitely nice for colder climates. As far as the horn, I like this uh, area with the chrome on the outside of the Denali nameplate with the GMC. As far as the horn itself, pretty aggressive horn, not the most aggressive, but definitely competitive with the mid-size segment. You got your voice commands right here. You can uh, turn off your phone, you can answer your phone right here. To adjust the infotainment, you have these buttons right over here. So right now we're looking at a digital speedo. Uh, you press the button one more time, you can see your overall information, music settings once we connect the device. Uh, you can see the compass and or navigation, depending on if this vehicle is connected to the navigation or Apple CarPlay, phone settings, and the overall settings right here. So you can adjust the units, info pages, speed warning, software information, so on and so forth. Uh, this vehicle is not gonna have a heads up display. That would also be nice to get in the Denali trim, but again, not a very big deal. We can come out of here by pressing this button, press it one more time. And I personally like the digital speedometer setting the most. So I'm just gonna leave it right there. But as far as the gauges themselves, uh, the tachometer is gonna go to about 6,000 RPM, 6,800 I believe is the red line. Uh, we're gonna have 140 mile an hour uh, speedometer, 
fuel gauges in the middle, and the coolant temp right next to it. But that's about it. As far as the light controls, we are gonna get automatic headlights, kind of expected with a Denali trim. A little bit of leather on the surrounding area for your vents. The leather is gonna continue over here for this middle part of the dashboard. Over here too, very nice leather stitching area. It's gonna carry all the way down over here as well but the frame the frame for the dashboard is just gonna be a hard plastic but not a big deal the area that you're gonna be touching the most it's gonna be a really nice stitch material and we are gonna get a bose audio system but anyway over here we are gonna get automatic climate control too heated and cooled seats you got the trailer sway control you got the trash control you got bed lights uh, lane departure warning and you can turn on and off your parking sensors as we mentioned we get heated and cooled seats definitely nice to have in florida a little bit of additional storage right here a nice area over here this would be a nice area for a wireless charging pad we are gonna get a wireless charger right here the only problem is like i personally have the iphone pro max so it's a little bit larger than the regular iphone and it does not fit in this wireless charging pad for 2023 gmc it'll definitely be appreciated if you give a slightly larger of a wireless charging pad so people with any size phone could be able to use it but i'm sure that's going to be thought through um over here we got two usb ports uh aux cord right next to it and the 12 volt nice area for a radar detector this whole area i love the wood trim it looks extremely high quality it's going to be grained really nice uh piece to this interior very nice touch right here you got your gear selector for your eight speed automatic transmission very crisp shifting transmission we'll check that out once we take it out for a drive uh, we can pop it into reverse right here and really really nice backup camera super high resolution you can press this button we can turn off the guidance markers you can press this button we have a nice line right here which will line you up for a trailer or hitch receiver but we can put it back into park and um, it gives us a second but after a second it's going to go right back to its original mode and we're not going to have a sport mode in this uh, truck we're not going to have any manual shift modes either but we are going to have a low gear right here uh, two cup holders over here and they are going to give you a little bit of a hollow pass through so you can leave your phone there if you would like but as far as the center console, super soft leather, really nice area to rest your elbow. We can open it up right here and check out the space and really impressive space here as well. You're probably going to fit at least two, two liter uh, bottles of soda in there because it's extremely deep and you are going to have a pretty decent amount of width. But that's about it. We can shut it up right over here. As far as the glove box, let's take a look. We can pull this latch. It's not going to be damp. It's going to fall straight down but it's a massive glove box. You're gonna fit at least like 15 to 20 license plates. Really impressive amount of space. Up top, we are gonna to have an auto dimming rear view mirror. That's also a thumbs up. Wasn't really expecting that given the lack of some features. We're not even gonna have a push to start here. We're still gonna be using this old school uh, turnkey to start. So again, we are gonna be expecting quite a few updates for the next uh, model year of this GMC Canyon. But still, the overall quality of the materials, the steering wheel, every material that you're gonna be touching, it's gonna to be high quality, very good overall feel with this truck but that's about it for the front seat on this 2022 canyon denali really impressive quality of the materials we are missing a couple options that i would like to have uh not necessarily missing as far as this wireless charging pad i would just like for it to be a little bit wider so my phone personally would be able to fit but if you don't have the pro max i'm sure you're not gonna have any issues whatsoever but again that's about it for the front seat let's check out the back and see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the materials all right guys before we take a step inside this 2022 canyon denali i want to show you guys the window stickers so i'm not going to go through all the features you guys can pause and take a look at all of them uh, we are going to have a couple of options over here such as the trailer brake controller uh, wheel locks and the wireless charging wireless charging is only 75 bucks so i can't really give it a minus for not fitting my phone most companies will charge you several hundred bucks for wireless charging so definitely can't give gmc a minus for that after a 1200 dollars destination charge and basically a base uh, Canyon Denali. This is all the standard equipment. You can pause, take a look at all the standard equipment on the base 2022 Denali crew cab. But after a $1,200 destination charge, we're going to be sitting around $42,785. So pretty pricey, pretty pricey for a midsize SUV, but we're going to get really high quality materials on the inside. Uh, not the most features, but the features that you would need are definitely available and are offered on this Denali trim. As far as the fuel economy, this is also another great reason to go with the uh, Colorado or Canyon over the Silverado or the Sierra. We're going to get 18 city, 25 highway miles per gallon with a 3.6 liter V6, which is still making over 300 horsepower. And we're going to get to 60 in around seven seconds. So more than powerful enough, you're going to have a 7,000 pound towing capacity and you can fit about 1,300 pounds of stuff into this truck. So pretty impressive. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back here and the overall quality of the materials. So again, the hard touch is gonna of course continue for the upper part of the door panel. Beneath that, you got some really high quality leather trim, just like in the front, really nice area to rest your arm, power one touch, uh, even for the rear, a little bit of storage right here, additional storage beneath it, a little area for a 12 ounce cup holder, and you can probably fit a couple snacks back over here. 
but I want to show you guys the space behind me as a driver at six feet tall. So I'll pop over to the other side and show you the back seat over there. All right, guys. So as far as the back seats, you're going to have that super soft leather still. And these seats do come up. You can just pick it up right over here after you pull that latch. You got to pull that latch first, but you are going to get some additional storage right down here. Of course, the same thing is going to be behind that seat right down there. You're not going to have as much space as like the Silverado or the Sierra, where even with the seats up, you have a nice flat floor where like one person will be able to sleep overnight but not a big deal. It's still nice that these seats raise up and gives you a nice little additional amount of storage, but we can drop them right over here. We'll take a step and check out the leg room. And remember, I'm six feet tall, sitting behind my seat settings. So let's see what we got. So behind my seat settings, uh, my knees are starting to get a little bit close. They're not quite touching. I have about an inch or so of knee room. I have plenty of space for my feet though. I have no problems when it comes to foot space, but as far as knee room, I am starting to get a little bit close. Uh, we're not gonna get any vents back here. We are gonna get two USBs and a 12 volt with some additional storage right over here. Uh, we're up, we are gonna get a center cubby. Let's pop it for you guys right over here. We're gonna have some leather on both sides so two people can rest their arms over here and have their cups in these cup holders. But that's about it for the back seat. Pretty impressive. I do have plenty of space back here. There's a little bit more space here than the Toyota Tacoma, but still not the most space if you really need to fit like six feet tall plus people on a consistent basis in your back seat. That's when I'll definitely suggest going with the GMC Sierra or the Silverado or any 1500 truck. Those are definitely going to be a huge upgrade when it comes to backseat space. But that's about it for the interior and exterior of this all new 2022 GMC Canyon Denali. Let's take this truck out for a drive. All right, guys, now we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of this all new 2022 GMC Canyon Denali. Let's take it out for a drive. And first thing I notice, of course, is going to be this key fob hitting my leg. It would definitely be nice for us to have a push and start function in 2022, at least for the Denali trim. I'm sure I'll hear from all you guys in the comments section, but they're gonna take care of it for 2023. It's still more than functional enough and it's still gonna be an electronically operated turnkey. So you can just flick it one time and it'll start the car right up. So it's basically a push to start. The only problem is it's gonna be just hitting your leg when you're driving like this. But anyway, first impressions also steering wheel definitely feels nice in your hands compared to the uh, Sierra and Silverado trucks. It's still gonna be just as direct. Those trucks are very direct when it comes to steering. But right here, speed bump. Yeah, you, we definitely feel the speed bumps more than we felt in the AT4 um, Sierra, that's for sure. But it's still pretty composed over the bumps. Definitely not something that you would wanna avoid or anything like that. But stepping out into this road right here, just daily acceleration about like a sixth throttle going to about 2000 RPM. Really solid acceleration. We get to 30 miles an hour, basically zero effort. But we have a straight road coming up over here, and um, I'll get to a I'll get to a full stop, and I'll catch back with you guys, and we'll try a real acceleration off the line. But all right, guys, we're at a full stop. Just gonna mat the gas pedal. Ooh, pretty strong off the line. Not the most torque, but it picks up. Wow! Once you cross like the 3,500 RPM mark, we have a serious, serious surge of power. Uh, kind of typical to uh, vehicles with um, variable valve timing and direct injection but it is really apparent here with this 3.6 liter V6. Let's check out the body roll and turning radius. Uh, very limited body roll, basically none. And the turning, wow, the steering wheel goes forever. This turning radius is like a zero turn lawnmower. This is borderline absurd. I wish you guys can see this. That's one of the most impressive parts of this truck so far. And coming out, we are gonna have a pretty solid bump over here. Boom, it handles it like it's not even there. Really solid truck, it handles the bumps pretty well, not as well as the 1500s, obviously. Hope you wouldn't expect to handle the bumps as well as the 1500s, but it definitely handles the bumps better than most SUVs that I've driven, and it handles the bumps just about as well as the Tacoma TRD Sport that we reviewed, and that's a much more, ooh, speed bump. And that's a much, the TRD Sport, it's gonna be a much more aggressive truck as a truck. This is more gonna be a luxury truck. This is more competitive to like the, TR, the Tacoma Limited, uh, but comparing to this to the TRD Sport, it feels very similar when it comes to just ruggedness and off-road capability, even though that's not what this truck's meant for. But we have a multiple lane highway coming up right here. It'll give us a good sense on how this truck is when it comes to on-road driving. Uh, we'll see the road noise, we'll see the wind noise, and the overall usable daily acceleration. So right here, about a third throttle, we're not gonna step on the gas too hard, right here, third throttle, a little bit long steering, but going to about 3,000 RPM, we are gonna get to like 50 miles an hour, basically effortlessly. Very solid pull from this 3.6 liter V6. But okay, guys, we're gonna turn onto this multiple lane highway right here. Uh, we'll accelerate pretty hard. I'll keep it quiet so you can take a listen to how this engine sounds right here. 
pretty solid engine note. Um, that was only about half throttle going to about 4,000 RPM. That wasn't full throttle, but it does have a very deep tone for a 3.6 liter V6. And now that we're just cruising about 50, 55 miles an hour on the highway, basically zero wind noise. I don't hear any tire noise either. And this eight speed transmission, it definitely gets you down in the RPMs. We're only rolling about 1300 RPMs going about 55 miles per hour. So pretty low revving engine. We'll slow down a little bit right here. We'll try to see how this truck is when it comes to passing power, but right here on the gas, whoo, boom. It has to figure out what gear to go in, but wow, once you get above 4,000 RPM, you have a very good overall pull. And still barely any wind noise, very quiet truck. We're not gonna have dual pane windows, but still very good road isolation. These tires, they're gonna be pretty thick for the sidewall. So you're gonna absorb the bumps super well too, at least for the road. Once we talk about like speed bumps, high speed speed bumps, that's not where this truck's really gonna shine, but it's still more than capable. But all right guys, I'm gonna try to give you a little bit of a POV shot with this truck. And right here, stepping on the gas right out here. Whew, definitely gets up and goes really well. Um, I'm not quite sure if there's like an issue with the steering rack in this truck. I may have to take it back to the dealership and get them to like fix it. But as you notice, we're going to have to turn the wheel a little bit just to keep this truck going straight. So they're going to have to probably take care of that before they give this truck to its next owner. But of course, not a big deal. I'm sure they'll take care of that as soon as I bring it back to the dealership. Overall, the steering is more than direct enough. We'll make a U-turn right here. We'll check out the turning radius with this truck one more time and then head back to Rivard Buick and GMC. And again, huge thanks to them for making this review possible. Unbelievable group of guys. They are unbelievably kind to me. They have a pretty impressive inventory too. Look at this turning radius. You get, you turn around so easily. About half throttle right here, daily acceleration. Whew. Very strong motor. But yeah, I would definitely suggest anybody in the Tampa area to check out Rivard Buick and GMC. Uh, these are some really impressive trucks. This specific trim for the Denali in 2022, there are some things that I would personally change about it, but fundamentally, like from the ground up, this is still a fantastic truck to drive. The ride quality is great. You don't really hear much road noise. And you don't really hear any wind noise at all either. It's pretty impressive. You have all the features you would ever want. Great backup camera, not quite as like in-depth camera-wise as the Sierra that we reviewed in this channel, but this vehicle also costs like $25,000 less. So you are gonna be expecting to make a few compromises. Uh, we're gonna be able to tow 7,000 pounds with this truck. Payload's almost 1,400 pounds. So as a truck, it's more than usable enough. The acceleration's fantastic. Seven seconds, zero to 60 for a mid-sized truck. More than impressive enough. Definitely a thumbs up for GMC. I just do wish that they do make a couple changes, such as this key fob. It would be nice to get pushed to start. This wireless charging pad, I would like for it to be a little bit bigger. And a proximity key would be nice as well, as well as full power seats. I don't wanna be pulling this little latch right here to be reclining and declining. But other than that, this truck is absolutely fantastic. I do think it's a pretty solid value for $40,000. Once they do update this vehicle in 2023, I can't even imagine how great it's gonna be overall. Comparing it to the other vehicles in the mid-size truck segment, this definitely feels smaller. And I know that's probably a big reason why most people will choose to go with a mid-size truck because they personally don't like the way the full-size truck feels. It feels too big for them. They don't feel comfortable driving it um, just like at high speeds or going through large turns in a full-size truck. And this definitely takes care of that. It feels very nimble, um, very quiet on the road too, very solid power. We get to highway speeds with barely any gas pedal. Really impressive. I love the styling on this truck too. And remember, as a truck itself, you're still gonna have very good capability with 7,000 pounds of towing and an almost 1,400 pound payload capacity. But other than that, we're gonna take this truck right back to Rivard Buick and GMC. And again, thank you so much for them for making this review possible. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I had a great time making this video. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know I have endless gratitude for all the subscribers. You know, the channel's just not possible without you guys. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Uh, leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people now. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Uh, leave a comment. Let me know if there's any cars or trucks you'd like to see review in this channel too. And I'll definitely try to get those videos for you guys as soon as possible. But other than that, again, thank you so much for watching. And I hope all of you have a great day.